There's this one gentleman I've looked up to since I was a teenager. Whether you're talking about style, you're talking about his business astuteness, you're talking about intelligence, he's an academic. Ladies and gentlemen, my heavy hitter tonight, Tebe Kalafeng, is arguably the foremost global African branding and reputation architect. Advisor is a best-selling author and a successful entrepreneur. He's been at the critical part of inception of some of the most well-known African brands, including Brand SA, Brand Africa, Brand Leadership, and the WWF, and more. Ladies and gents, please help welcome my role model, an amazing gentleman of integrity, Mr. Tebe Kalafeng. Thank you so much. I appreciate, I appreciate the opportunity. You're doing very well yourself. Thank you, sir. I mean, you are taking your brand to our continental. Uh, next is the world. It's, it's, it's the world, definitely. Now, talking about branding, why did you choose to become a brand specialist? And as a lot of people call you a, brand, a branding expert. Well, I mean, I didn't necessarily choose to get into the area. I found myself in the area and I found that my passions were fueled when I'm in branding. And I found that I woke up every day excited and happy to do that as a, as, as a, as a living. And I found that uh, this is what I should be doing. What is branding or what well, is a brand? Well, a brand is a simply, it's a promise made and a promise delivered. Uh, it is as simple as that. It is, a, it is that unique thing that defines who you are and distinguishes you from other people. I started working for Colgate Palmolive in New York. Uh, that's really when I started in the business of brand, of, of brand building, working on the Colgate Palmolive brand. Then came down to South Africa and worked for Sun International, uh, and then ended up as a marketing director for Nike for South Africa, and then ultimately for the continent. So you could say that um, uh, one, I followed my natural calling in terms of uh, uh, being able to, uh, to create ideas and to deliver those ideas. Uh, but I was then also fortunate to be able to get to work with some of the great global brands like Colgate like Nike, uh, and that uh, 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 grew, uh, uh, if you will, develop my understanding of brands, and that's really how I got into branding. And, and so, where is Brand Africa going? We started Brand Africa five years ago, and the reason we started, you know, after working around the continent and observing uh, some of the things that we now know uh, empirically are correct, uh, we then started saying, you know, Africans, we're not building brands. Uh, and now what, we've, what we found, you know, in our Brand Africa 100, we found that 80% or 77% of the brands which Africans admire are non-African. We started Brand Africa for three reasons. The one reason is we wanted to change the image about the continent, we wanted to change the narrative about Africa. The second thing is which we, one, we started Brand Africa because we wanted to celebrate our diversity yes. because we believe we are 54 different countries on a different level of development. The third thing we started Brand Africa for is we wanted to drive the competitiveness. So that's why we started Brand Africa 100 is to measure how far we've come. Now what does the uh, Africa's best brands um, celebrate and what does what, 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 what does it do? Like, do you take the top 100 brands in, in the continent? What we do what's is, the criteria? What, what we happens? do is we've gone to 22 countries around the continent and those 22 countries around the continent they represent 77% of the population of Africa and 77% of the, of the GDP of the continent. And we speak to everyday Africans and we ask them the question, what are your most admired brands? And we got a list of 8,500 brands. And then we create a, a, a metric and a, a methodology to be able to separate, to, to be able to, met, to, to equalize those brands because other countries like Nigeria have got 180 million people and other countries like Botswana have got only 1 million people or 1.5 mm. million people. The latest rankings have just came out about a week ago or so and I can see um, most of the admired brands and as you, already, as you were saying that are not African brands. Well, yeah, I mean, seeing brands like Nike, Adidas, Apple, Samsung, Zara, Google, BMW, Sony, Facebook, H and M. Where are the African brands? Coca Cola. Come on, guys, create your own brands. You know, one wise man once said to me, Mr. Igalafing, create your own brand or product for other people to consume. Because if you don't, for other people to consume so they can make themselves feel better. Because if you don't, other people will create their own brands for you to consume so you can make yourself feel better. Indeed, and I love that. I love that as a quote, by the way. You know, uh, we also, this year we also honored uh, Strife Masiwa, who created Econet Wireless uh, as for, with a Lifetime Achievement Award. Amazing and entrepreneur. Mr. Masiwa would love to have you on the show. Please, come on <laughs> kicking doors. Otherwise, we'll come kicking well, down your office doors. Well, he's been kicking doors before MTN was started, before 
before uh, before Vodacom was started, uh, and before many of the other African brands in telecommunications were started. And they have a uh, long before. And, uh, I mean, and, and there's got a last Sicom project, uh, with, uh, as, as, as you know. So uh, so we honoured him at the lifetime achievement. And one of the important things that he said, he said he's hoping that in twenty in in, in twenty twenty five we will see on the New York Stock Exchange and we will see a reversal of this list with African brands at the top of the list. But it's only when I get there if we are creating the brands because who knows an African better than an African?